Hey, how's it going you guys? So for this video, we're going to go over the problem lowest common ancestor of a binary tree. The description says given a binary tree, find the lowest common ancestor LCA of two given nodes in the tree. According to the definition of LCA in Wikipedia, the lowest common ancestor is defined between two nodes P and Q as the lowest node in T such that has both P and Q as descendants, where we allow a node to be a descendant of itself. So we're given the following binary tree, right? And all this problem is asking us to do is find the first common ancestor between P and Q. So in this example, we have five and one, right? So five and one right here, they're at the same level. And so what that means is that the first common ancestor would be the direct parent above us. So that would be three in this case. And then also keep in mind that the least common ancestor can be the node P or Q itself, because P can be the parent of itself, and then Q could be the parent of itself. So if, if that node contains both P and Q, then that in itself makes it the least common ancestor. So to solve this problem, we're going to be using a post-order traversal. So in a post-order traversal, we always visit the child nodes first because we're going to visit the left, the right, and then we're going to do something with that node. So we can say visit. So left, right, and visit, right, in a post-order traversal. So that means we would go to 6, then 7, 4, 2, 5, 0, 8, 1, 3. So you can see that we're kind of going from the bottom of the tree all the way to the top. The reason why this is going to be helpful for us is because we need to determine which is the least common ancestor. And so when we are going and visiting each and every node, we can determine if that subtree contains P and Q up to that point. And if we determine that that subtree does include both, then we found our answer. So let's go over an example where we have P equal to 5 and Q equal to 1. So we're going to start at node 3, and we're going to do a post-order traversal, right? So we're going to go left, we're going to go left again, and then we're going to go left again from 6, but that's null. We go right at 6, but that's null. So that means we need to visit 6. But since our node 6 is not equal to 5 and not equal to 1, that means we return false from this recursive call. And now from node 5, since we already went left, we need to go right. So we're going to go right to 2. Then from 2, we're going to go left. 7's left and right is null. And since 7 is not equal to P or Q, that means we return false from node 7. And now we're going to go right at node 2. And once again, we have node 4 having both left and right child as null. 4 is not equal to P or Q, so we return false from 4. So now we're at node 2. We already visited node 7 and node 4, so all of the children for node 2. Now we need to visit node 2 itself. However, node 2 is also not equal to P or Q, but this is where the extra logic comes in. We need to determine if anything below our subtree at node 2 has been true up to this point. But we can already see that both the left and right child were false, and since node 2 is also not equal to P or Q, we can return false from node 2 as well. And now we're at node 5. Finally, we get to a point where node 5 is equal to P. So what that means is we're going to get to return true from this function. Now at node 3, we're going to go right and then left. And since at node 0, both the left and right child are null, 0 is not equal to P or Q, we return false from this function. Likewise, for node 1, right child, it's not equal to P or Q, so we're going to return false from this function. And now we're going to check node 1. We can see that node 1 is equal to Q, so we are going to return true from node 1 up to node 3. And now we get to a point in our traversal where our current node's subtree has at least two trues below it, right? Because we have 5 and 1. And keep in mind, we don't need to care about 
where these nodes are. We just need to know that there were at least two trues in the subtree because we know that all of the nodes in our tree are unique. So as long as we have two trues, we know that we have seen both P and Q in that subtree. So when we come back in the recursive call for node three, we would determine that node three would be our least common ancestor. Okay, so let's implement the code for this solution. The first thing we wanna do is initialize a tree node that we will eventually return from our lowest common ancestor function. And so we can initialize this outside in global scope and we can say tree node result. The reason why we want to initialize it outside is because we're going to be writing a recursive function and the first time that we find the least common ancestor, we're just going to set it to this result. The next thing we'll want to do is write a helper function, a recursive function that will actually find the lowest common ancestor. So we can call it find LCA and we're going to pass in our root and then our P and Q node. So this will take root, P and Q. And after we exit out of this recursive function, we're just going to be returning our result. So now let's just write this find LCA helper function. And in this find LCA function, remember we're return returning booleans, true or false. So boolean find LCA, tree node root, tree node P and tree node Q. So remember, we're writing a post order traversal. So we're going to visit left, visit right, and then actually perform our logic after that point. So the first thing we want to do is just check for null values, right? Because if we if we find a null value, we can just return false from our function. So if root is null, return false. And then now we're going to call find LCA on root.left. So we can say boolean left equals find LCA on root.left and then pass P and Q. And then we're going to call right find LCA on root.right. And P and Q are remaining the same. We're not modifying them. And so now this is where the logic comes in. We need to determine if the current node, our root, is equal to P or Q. Because remember, we could have a scenario where P or Q is its own least common ancestor. So to do that, we'll say boolean cur, and we can say if root is equal to P or root is equal to Q, right? If either of those cases are true, then that means cur would be true, right? And so now we need to find out if from these three booleans that we have discovered, if we have actually found our result. And the way we're going to determine that is if any of these, if there's at least two that are true, right? Because in order to have a least common ancestor, we need both P and Q to be under that subtree. So if left and right, or right and cur, or left and cur, if any of those conditions are true, then we know we found our result. So let's write that out real quick. We can say if left and right, and this will need to be wrapped in parentheses, or left and cur, or right and cur. If we have at least two trues, then we know we found our answer. So we could just say result is equal to cur. And now finally, all we need to do is return true or false from this find LCA. So we just need to return if any of these are true or not. So to do that, we can just say if left or right or cur. So that's actually it for our recursive function. So let's submit this. Oh, oh this needs to be root. Let's submit that again. Cool. So our time complexity is going to be big O of n. 
we have to loop over all n nodes in our tree. And then our space complexity is also big O of n because in the worst case, we would have a recursion depth going up to big O of n. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are staying safe during this crazy time. Please feel free to like and subscribe if you want more videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one.